Well, welcome again to Bench Warmers. Hope you are hanging in there on July 22nd. Major League Baseball is back, and we will talk with Dick Bramer here in a second as the Minnesota Twins finally get their season started this week. Coming up as well, Jason Andera, our high school sports guy in South Dakota. Are we ready for some high school football or not? We will talk about that. Some of the players that Jason is looking forward to covering this fall, and Jandy has his South Dakota Mount Rushmore, the top four high school athletes in the state in the last 10 years. And urgent care is the topic this week from Avera Health. Elena Lanson and Ryan Slava from Avera Orthopedics on how to get fixed quick if you do suffer a sports injury. Our big guest this week is Minnesota born and raised. He has covered the Minnesota Twins almost as long as the Twins have been in Minnesota. Dick Bramer is the TV voice of the Twins on Fox Sports North. Dick, first of all, appreciate the time. Um, how you holding up here after four of the strangest months uh, probably in our lifetimes? Well, it's easy now because we know that we're going to have a season starting here uh, on Friday. But it's been tough for every baseball fan out there. We're just not programmed to have as much free time as we've had. And I know a lot of fans like to, you know, schedule their days around the telecast, the radio broadcast, whatever. So it'll be a great relief for everybody, including those of us who get to work uh, the games uh, when we finally get started Friday night. And I've heard you talk about you doing a little more fishing than usual, maybe getting a lot of things done at home. But was your book in the works uh, before all this happened or how'd that work out? Yeah, the idea was to uh, have it launch in the middle of March, which we did, uh, kind of as a tribute to the 60th anniversary of uh, Twins baseball since they moved here from Washington, D.C. And that was one of the motivating uh, f uh, factors for me to write the book was to kind of make it a Twins history book from a couple of different perspectives, that of a little kid growing up in western Minnesota, very small town called Dumont. I'm just barely old enough to remember the first Twins game ever played back in 1961. So a Twins history book covering 60 years from the perspective of a, a little boy, then a young adult following the team, and then now for nearly 40 years as a broadcaster. We hadn't planned on releasing it during a worldwide pandemic when the bookstores are closed and all that, but that's, uh, that's the way it turned out. But it's available now. Is it, is it 108 stories, one for each? Stitch yeah. on the baseball, uh, is that kind the of the deal? publisher, Triumph Books out of Chicago, they were very gracious in kind of letting me uh, title the book and format it the way I wanted to. And so I thought, well, let's just tell 108 stories. Uh, hopefully the end result would be a book that would be easy to pick up and hard to put down. But if you've just got five, ten minutes or whatever you want to read, you can read a couple of stories. Uh, I tell people it's not just a coffee table book, it's a toilet tank book. So if you've just got a few minutes and you want to read some twin stories, uh, hopefully you'll find them interesting. And then if you need to move on to something else, you can until you pick the book up again. All right. That's smart marketing right there. <laughs> All right. In a normal year, we'd be 100 games into a season right now. But the, the, home, the opener, not the home opener, but the opener Friday at Chicago. Now, how are you going to call away games this year? It's going to be different. It's going to be different. We're going to be doing all the games from Target Field, whether the team is playing there or not. The good news is I'll actually be able to see 30 regular season Twins games and broadcast those. The challenge will be when the Twins are on the road, as they will be this weekend against the White Sox. We'll be in the booth. I'll be working with Justin Morneau, and uh, we'll be in the booth looking at a monitor and essentially being – able to see exactly what the viewer can already see. Uh, we've been told we'll get some different angles that we can look at that the viewers at home won't be able to, but none of us have ever done anything like this. It's not ideal. Uh, it's not perfect, but what in calendar year 2020 has been ideal and perfect. Uh, it's not normal, but we've got some really good people and we're all going to try to do the very best we can to uh, bring the games home to, to people in the upper Midwest. All right, and what about the team this year? What are your expectations? The 60-game the season, the playoffs are not going to change. We're still going to have 10-team playoffs, but what, what are your expectations this year? Well, first of all, I think there's been some uh, chatter and some uh, words printed of suggesting that the regular season won't be legitimate, and, and I get that argument. 60 games is not the same as 162. But as you pointed out, the postseason format – is legitimate. It will be right now the top 10 teams, an outside chance they may actually expand those yet. But the top 10 teams are going to go into the tournament at the end, as would be the case in a normal 
postseason. So in my mind, whoever wins the World Series, whether it's the Twins or the Yankees, it will be a legitimate world championship because the, the postseason will, pl- will be played, we hope, the way a normal postseason would be played. I expect the Twins to be very, very good. This is an exciting lineup. I think the pitching staff is going to be much improved over what it was at the end of last year. Uh, but we don't know how any of this is going to play out. Every team will be impacted, I would think, by COVID-19 during the regular season. So if a team is sailing along and everything looks good and they look like they're going to you know, make a long run in the playoffs, whether it be the Twins or the Yankees, if their closer goes down with the virus you know, late in the season, all of that's going to change. So for that reason and a lot of reasons, this is really going to be riveting to watch. And it's not going to be as long as a regular, regular season, but it's really going to be fascinating to watch. Yeah, the key, just make that sprint to get to the postseason and then uh, make it happen from there. Uh, some little bit of different rules on the field this year. There, there, there's no spitting, supposedly. There's no punishment if you do it. So that's going to be strange. But what are some other rule changes maybe that we'll see uh, this year? Well, the one I like is the uh, universal DH, particularly given the fact that the Twins are going to be playing all their games in the central divisions of of Major League Baseball. They'll be playing the Cubs. They'll be playing the Reds, the Cardinals, so on and so forth. And so what I think we'll see is, you know, of course, the National League will have the designated hitter, but some uniformity in terms of how the game is played, how the game is managed. And, and that's something that should have been done a long, long time ago. And that's one rule change I hope will be extended beyond the 2020 season. Other than that, you know, in extra innings, the teams are going to be able to start with a runner at second base to start the half inning. And so now what do you do, for instance, if you're Rocco Baldelli and it's two outs in the ninth inning and Buxton's up? You know, do you tell him, hey, just swing for the fences and see if he can hit a game-winning home run And if you strike out and you go to the 10th inning, it's the last guy up who goes on the bases. Now, can you imagine starting an extra inning and the Twins get to put maybe the fastest guy in the game at second base? It's going to be interesting to watch. And it's the rule change that I don't particularly care for. But the Twins are practicing it now in these intra-squad games. What to do? Do you bunt? You know, how do you play? Do you play for one run? Do you hope for a bigger inning? So the extra innings are going to be interesting to watch, too. All right, Dick, we certainly appreciate the time. Looking forward to hearing you and seeing you out there when the Twins get going this weekend. Thanks a lot for joining us. You got it. All right, coming up next, if you get hurt, you want to get fixed fast. How they are getting you in and out in a hurry at Avera Orthopedics. Welcome back to Bench Warmers. If you have an injury and you want to skip the emergency room, you can head on over to Avera Orthopedics Urgent Care. Here is Elena Lanson with Ryan Slaba from Avera. So I would say a lot of people know about orthopedic doctor's appointments, orthopedic surgery, but not a lot of people know about urgent care, orthopedic care. Sure. Um, orthopedic urgent care it entails um, injuries a lot of times, recent injuries, a good place to start your treatment. Um, we do, um, you know, you, no one plans to get injured. So a lot of times they, you're out guarding in the backyard and twist your ankle. It's a great place to start, to get your care started. So like you said, no one plans to get injured. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people are able to just walk in and get an appointment with you guys? That's correct. Uh, any, anybody can walk in and be seen that day. Yep. What type of injuries do you care for here? Um, different types of things that you're able to test for? I know you guys have an x-ray. Um, correct, correct. Different machines? Um, yep, great question. Um, we see anything from a pediatric uh, fall off the monkey bars to a 90-year-old you know, fall at home over a, a rug on the ground in their kitchen. Um, so we, we do x-ray, a lot of splinting if it's needed, if not referrals to one of our specialists too. And a big part of the walk-in and what's nice about that is that you can be seen for that injury and then um, you can suggest to go see somebody else or set another appointment. Is that kind of the special thing about walk-ins? Correct. It's a nice place to kind of get some ideas and diagnosis of what's going on with my my injury or my pain. Is it something I need to see a surgeon for? Is it something I can be treated non-surgically? And kind of give the patient some reassurance that, yeah, this is fine. You're going to be fine with this injury. You're not going to need surgery with this. And it kind of gets them back to their good, uh, their quality of life, essentially, as soon as possible. 
So any age group is able to come and see you and you're able to treat all ages for pretty much all injuries? That is correct. Um, we see two-year-olds who fall off the monkey bars to nine-year-olds who fall at home and, and break an ankle. So it, we offer services, x-ray, um, an MRI can be ordered if needed, even a CT scan. Um, I do a lot of splints and casts uh, if indicated. And so it's kind of nice. We kind of get the treatment started and, and get the patient in the right direction. Um, and if it needs a referral to a, one of our talented surgeons, we'll send them to the, one of our surgeons at that point. But. And what's really nice about that, coming to see you first, you're able to bypass the ER, bypass that weight, yep. Um, yep. and really get the care you need um, from someone who is very specific in that area. That's, that's again, correct. Um, it's one way to kind of get, get away the wait time from the ER. You get someone who's more specialized in orthopedic needs um, versus, uh, you know, any cost effectiveness as well. You're seeing somebody in clinic versus paying an ER fee, which is really nice for the patient. And you get someone more specialized in that specific need of medicine, which is nice. And you guys are available for walk-ins pretty much all week um, at two locations? That's correct. Uh, we are, I am located 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, at the 26th and Marion Family Health Center Clinic. And then we have an urgent care at night, 5 to 9, um, Monday through Friday, and 10 to 1 on Saturdays at the located 7th, 7th and Louise site. Um, where you can, so we're open pretty much 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock at night, which is really nice for the patient for access. Well, I'm going to run outside with a little bit more peace of mind knowing I can come see you <laughs> right away if anything goes <laughs> down. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Coming up next, nobody loves South Dakota high school sports more than Jason and Dara. Jandy joins us next to talk about the state of the state as we creep closer to another high school sports season. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics. Welcome back to Bench Warmers. Jason Andera is here. His golf game is crappy. But he's always happy. Good to see you, buddy. How's it going? I love it. Uh, you're very right about both of those things. <laughs> Let's talk about some high school sports. Football, soccer, uh, girls tennis, cheer and dance. First allowable practices are coming up early in August. Uh, less than two weeks away. What do we know about, do we have a green light for high school sports right now in South Dakota? Well, that's the decision being made today at the Board of the direct Directors deciding what should be done there. The green light from the task force, though, is a good sign that we're going to have fall sports. Now, modification-wise, we might have tons of modifications. I think more modifications for those sports being played inside, like volleyball, versus sports played outside, like football. But thank God, we're going to have some high school sports in South Dakota this year. All right, one other thing that's kind of up in the air. Football, uh, they've been kicking around an idea of going from seven classes to five classes in South Dakota. We have talked about this for decades, that this is a good idea. Um, a lot of the athletic directors, when they brought it up in April, didn't really like going with this change. The nine-man coaches didn't like it uh, because they want to keep three classes. Five classes is probably the answer, right? It probably is the answer, but as you and I have talked, Tom, um, it's more about ratios than it is about the number of classes. Um, you can make a nice ratio two to one two and a half to one school size with five classes in south dakota that is doable seven classes may be a little bit too much the really discrepancy comes down to those nine man classes where they're closer together in ratio but there's so many teams south dakota's just set up funny doesn't matter what we come up with for a class size system somebody's going to be mad about it um, I, you and I, though, agree that we can do a good five-class system. It won't happen this year. And, of course, we're going to have some more hiccups coming up in the next year or so with Harrisburg growing, T growing, and then with the new school in Sioux Falls, Jefferson, trying to decide if they're going to play varsity football right away, if they're going to play a junior varsity schedule, how many people will go to Jefferson at first. There's a lot of question marks here, Tom. Yeah, not for this year, maybe for 2021. All right, let's talk about some kids you're looking forward to covering oh, yeah. when we do get to the seasons this fall. Talk about Chase Mason. Mm -hmm from Viber Gurley. You know, this guy is a phenomenal athlete. He's got the frame of a perfect prototypical quarterback, 6'4", 200 pounds. He can gun the ball. He got the attention of some major FBS schools, getting some offers from Fresno State, tons of FCS offers. But as we really saw him make a name for himself in high school football, 
A lot of us haven't been watching him play baseball, and baseball is his best sport. He hits the ball at an over 105 mile per hour exit velocity. He can throw the ball over 90 miles an hour from the mound. He is one of the top baseball prospects we've seen in this state in a long time. And I asked him, he said his goal is to play SEC baseball. I think if he doesn't get that offer, maybe he looks at football as a secondary option. Sweet swing, man. Yeah. All right, uh, a linebacker at Sioux Falls, Washington, Randolph Kapai. Another guy who's gotten noticed from around the country. I mean, he's gotten offers from Oregon. Um, and then he finally decided to stay at Nebraska last year. So he's one of the top athletes in the state. Again, maybe you haven't seen him play, but he can take over games. Maybe he doesn't take over games quite like a guy like Seth Benson did at Washington, but he's got that potential and he's got that frame that FBS schools absolutely love. Randolph Kapai is going to be fun to watch in his senior year. Another two-sport star at Sioux Falls, Washington, Sydney Shetner. How about that? She decides to play volleyball and basketball at the big-time D1 level at Louisville. Um, she's very excited to see how her career unfolds playing with her ex-teammate, PK at uh, Louisville playing volleyball, but also decided to play basketball. And another young volleyball player at O'Gorman. You probably have to know about Bergen Riley. Just gonna be a sophomore this year, already has the attention of national scouts. Maybe the best player, volleyball player, to come out of South Dakota in a long time. Watch out for Bergen Riley in volleyball this you year. Have, you have some preview shows for football and volleyball coming up on the network, right? You bet. The Wednesday before football starts, we will have both volleyball and football covered in our preview shows. Can't wait. All right, and we'll have Varsity Sports Live on Friday nights oh, yeah. during football season starting August 28th. Coming up next, Jandy's Mount Rushmore, the top four South Dakota high school athletes in the last 10 years. Welcome back. We continue our Mount Rushmore theme this summer. We've been going through our colleges, our conferences around here, having our people pick the top four athletes in the last 10 years. And that is not easy when you've got an entire state and all of high school sports in the last decade. Jason Andera, how did you come up with, what was your rationale for the four that you ended up with? Well, I just put them in a blender and this is what popped out. No, it is incredibly hard to pick out you know, great players from different sports throughout a decade, but uh, I took into account how good they are, how much of an impact they made in their sport, and how maybe how well they do at some other sports as well. All right, let's start with uh, the White Snake from Sioux Falls, Washington. Nate Gary, cute little picture of him here when he was in high school. I didn't have the beard yet, but fabulous athlete at Washington. You know, even when he was in high school, though, he was twice as big as the rest of his competition. He had that huge neck, really intimidating on the football field. That's what we remember him for. But uh, people don't remember, he played offense and got 1,200 yards in his senior season with 22 touchdowns. So not only an offensive great player, defensive great player, he kicked, he punted, and he was a great track athlete. I mean, the guy won the 200 as a junior and as a senior and then set what was at the time the record, state record for the best 100 meter as well as a senior. Uh, three state titles in football, some records in track. I mean, one of the most outstanding athletes I've had the pleasure to cover. All right, another track athlete who literally won everything, Macy Hines. <laughs> I mean, five years in a row won the 800 at the state tournament, uh, at the state track meet, and won every single event on the track that was not involving hurdles. Yes, the 100 all the way to the 3200. She won every race. This doesn't happen in track and field. Uh, it did with Macy Hines, and she was absolutely a blazer in every event that you could possibly suit up for over a five-year period. One of the best that Class B and the state has ever seen. Howard Woodcote Relays has their special events, uh, best runners from all over the country, really. She yeah. won that event twice in the 800. Yeah, she won it twice. They have it every other year. She won it both times as a sophomore and as a senior. All right, moving on to the polar bear, Nash Hutmaker from Chamberlain. You've gotten to know uh, pretty well over the last couple of years. Yeah, Nash, uh, he, he's as great of a guy as you can possibly have. I mean, this guy pulls his weight for the rest of the team. But let's talk about Nash and what he did on the football field, three-time All-State player, but his best sport, hands down, was wrestling. And he was ranked the number one heavyweight wrestler in the nation as a senior. 
He won four state titles as a heavyweight, never been done in South Dakota before. His pin streak ran up to 73. That's the second all-time nationally. He ended up 166 and 0 in wrestling. Um, and he also, to boot, was the Class A champion in the shot and the disc as a junior. So, man, that's just the tip of the iceberg. This guy, unanimous. Lee belongs on this list. Headed to Nebraska. I'm going to argue with anybody who argues with me on what, social media on this one. What is arguing that one? All right. Matthew Moores from Yankton will be a senior coming up uh, at Yankton High School. But uh, what about Matthew? Even his seventh grade season through just his junior year here, he's already put a career together that overachieves anyone else in Class AA. The all-time leading scorer in AA basketball. He started as a seventh grader, okay, on the varsity squad as an eighth grader got into the starting lineup averaged over 20 points per game as a freshman brought a state championship home to yankton for the first time in 40 years and did it single-handedly i mean he got them out of the uh, first round no problem and then uh, got a 45 point game as a 10th grader last year he was the all-time leading scorer in double a history he is phenomenal and he plays a couple other sports he plays baseball and does high jumping in track as well all right, somebody please jump on social media and argue about Nash, uh, Nash Hutmaker with Jandy. Uh, beat him up a little bit. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks a lot. Anytime. All right, uh, I'll look ahead to next week when we come back. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics. Our thanks this week to Dick Bramer. He is back on the call this Friday for the Minnesota Twins opener at Chicago. Thanks to Jason and Dara. Please tear him up on social media. And Tom Duple will join us next week to talk about the addition of St. Thomas University to the Summit League and where the league is on making a decision on fall sports. We'll see you next week.